Imagine a world where the global skies are no longer ruled by Boeing and Airbus, where the most advanced long-haul jet isn't born in Seattle or Toulouse, but in Shanghai. That's the bold vision behind China's new C-939 Superjet, a project so secret that even insiders only whisper about it. This isn't just another airplane, it's China's bid to dominate the $3 trillion future of global aviation. If the C-919 challenged the A320, and the C-929 is aiming at the 787, then the C-939 is the final step, a full-scale assault on the very foundations of Western aerospace dominance. Is the world prepared for this? To understand why the C-939 isn't just another aircraft, but a direct challenge to the very foundations of global aviation, we need to look at China's long-term strategy. For decades, the commercial skies have been dominated by a duopoly, Boeing in the United States and Airbus in Europe. But China never intended to stay a mere customer. With its rapidly expanding air travel market and rising geopolitical ambitions, Beijing set out to build its own aerospace legacy, one step at a time. First came the ARJ-21, a regional jet designed mostly for domestic use. Its purpose wasn't to break sales records, but to teach China's aviation sector how to design, test, and certify an aircraft. Then came the C919, a direct competitor to the Airbus A320neo and Boeing 737 MAX. Despite initial skepticism, the C919 is now flying with China Eastern Airlines, proving that Beijing can build a modern narrow-body jet. But China wasn't stopping there. The next project, the C929, was created to challenge the Boeing 787 and Airbus A350. However, lurking beyond this already ambitious program is something even bigger. The C939 Superjet. The C939 is China's boldest move yet, a wide-body long-haul aircraft with the capacity to carry between 300 and 400 passengers over distances of up to 14,000 kilometers. In other words, Beijing to New York, Shanghai to Buenos Aires, Guangzhou to Cape Town, without stepping foot in Western supply chains. That's the real goal, independence. Yet almost nothing about the C-939 is official. It exists in whispers, leaked blueprints, and quiet announcements on Chinese state engineering forums. Western analysts call it the invisible giant, not because it doesn't exist, but because China is hiding it in plain sight. And it makes sense. The less attention the project gets from Boeing, Airbus, and regulators in the West, the smoother its development, testing, and funding can continue, far from geopolitical scrutiny. But make no mistake, this isn't just about building a plane, it's about breaking a monopoly. If the C919 was China's entry ticket and the C929 its audition, then the C939 is the final act, the one that could turn the duopoly into a trinity, and the aviation world may not be ready for what happens next. Let's break down what makes the C939 more than a symbolic gesture and how it might technically compete with the world's most advanced long-haul jets. Although official specifications are still tightly under wraps, analysts and insiders have pieced together a compelling picture based on patents, industry leaks, and China's broader engineering trajectory. Capacity and range. Early estimates suggest that the C939 will be a dual-aisle, twin-engine jet with seating for 300 to 400 passengers, putting it squarely in the same category as the Boeing 777X, and the Airbus A350-1000. The projected range of up to 14,000 kilometers, 8,700 miles, matches or even surpasses that of its Western counterparts. In an era where ultra-long-haul flights are becoming more popular, from Perth to London or New York to Singapore, the C939 is clearly being designed to capture premium routes. Materials and Design it is highly likely that the C939 will use advanced composite materials to reduce weight, much like the 787 Dreamliner, which is 50% composite by weight. China has already shown significant progress in carbon fiber technology through its aerospace and military programs. Recent patents also hint at a cutting-edge aerodynamic design, possibly incorporating blended winglets or even futuristic wing flex technology. Engines. This is the biggest question mark and the highest stakes part of the program. China's WS-20 turbofan is already in testing for military aircraft, and the CJ-2000 is rumored to be a next-generation, high-bypass engine designed for commercial wide bodies. However, China has also considered partnerships with Russia via PD-35 engines, or even fallback options from Rolls-Royce. But the real goal is clear. 
China wants a fully domestic power plant by 2035. Cabin and technology. Expect a passenger experience modeled after top-tier aircraft like the A350 with quieter cabins, smart lighting, and real-time air quality systems. With Huawei and other Chinese tech giants leading in AI and IoT, the C939 could integrate onboard 5G connectivity, biometric boarding, and advanced flight systems long before Boeing or Airbus adopt them fully. So the question isn't whether China can build a plane that flies. It's whether they can build one that flies better, more efficiently, more quietly, more profitably. And if early signs are accurate, the C939 might not just compete with the West, it might set the new standard. Behind every aircraft lies a global web of suppliers, the companies that provide everything from landing gear and avionics to cabin seats and the engines themselves. And this is where the C939 becomes more than just a technical project. It's the focal point of a geopolitical tug of war over who controls the future of aviation. Historically, even China's most advanced jets have relied on Western partners. The ARJ-21 used General Electric engines. The C919 uses LEAP engines from CFM, a joint venture between GE and Safran. Even the avionics, fuel systems, and wing materials often came from US or European suppliers. But with rising geopolitical tensions and the threat of sanctions, China has learned an important lesson. Dependency is a vulnerability. The C-939 is expected to be the first major Chinese passenger jet designed to phase out that dependency entirely. Engines. As discussed earlier, the biggest question is the engine. China's CJ-2000 program is rumored to be an advanced development, reportedly using technology derived from both military and commercial experience. If it succeeds, it may be the first time in modern history that a non-Western country fields a world-class wide-body engine independently. Composites and Structure China has heavily invested in domestic composites production. Companies like Avic Composite and Shanghai Aircraft Manufacture SAMC, are already producing major structural components for the C-9019, including its wings and fuselage sections. The same supply chain is expected to scale up for the C-939, with new facilities and localized material sourcing. Avionics and Electronics With companies like Huawei, ZTE, and CETC leading China's tech industry, the C-939 is likely to contain some of the most advanced domestic flight control, navigation, and communication systems ever built in China. This is a sharp break from Boeing and Airbus jets, which still rely on U.S. systems, like Honeywell and Collins Aerospace. Cabin interiors. China is also pushing for a homegrown premium passenger experience. Seating manufacturers like Zhejiang Tiancheng Control and cabin systems developer FACC are working on Chinese-designed layouts that rival what you'd find on the Airbus A350 or Boeing 777. China isn't just designing a jet. It's building an entire aviation ecosystem, and with each new supplier it develops, Boeing and Airbus lose a customer. The C-939 isn't just a competitor in the skies. It's a blueprint for how China plans to win the industrial war on the ground. Aviation is never just about flying. It's a symbol of power, prestige, and global reach. And if the C-939 successfully enters service by 2035, it won't just reshape the commercial sky, it could rewrite the balance of power between East and West. For the past 50 years, Boeing and Airbus haven't just built planes, they've built influence. Every aircraft sold to a foreign airline represents not just revenue, but diplomatic leverage, trade cooperation, and long-term economic dependency. When a country chooses the Boeing 787 or the Airbus A350, they're committing to decades of spare parts, pilot training, engine support, and maintenance deals, often worth more than the plane itself. The C-939 is designed to destroy that monopoly. China's strategy seems clear. Target emerging markets first. Unlike Boeing and Airbus, who often prefer to sell to Tier 1 airlines in Europe or the US, China is eyeing Latin America, Africa, Southeast Asia, the Middle East, and even Russia. These are regions that have already embraced Chinese infrastructure spending, 5G networks, electric buses, and high-speed trains through the Belt and Road Initiative. The C-939 may be the aviation layer of that same global playbook. Financing is Beijing's secret weapon. Airbus can offer discounts. Boeing can offer payment plans. But China can offer state-backed loans, delayed payments, and geopolitical deals. 
Imagine a country like Nigeria or Indonesia buying 10 C-939s and in return receiving billions in Chinese investment in airports, railways, or energy grids. That's a package Boeing and Airbus can't match without political approval from Washington or Brussels. And then there's the wild card, sanctions. If the U.S. attempts to block Chinese jets from being exported by banning U.S. components, China will point to its domestically produced engines, avionics, and flight systems. That's why the C-939 is designed to be sanctions-proof. Make no mistake, the C-939 is not just another jet. It's China's declaration that aerospace supremacy is no longer a Western privilege. And if you think Boeing or Airbus can ignore it, just remember how Western automakers reacted when China entered electric vehicles. They laughed until BYD crushed them. If the C-939 succeeds, the skies may never belong to just two companies again. So, what happens when the C-939 takes to the skies? If it delivers on even half of its promises, range, performance, price, and political backing, it will become the most disruptive aircraft since the Boeing 747. But this time, the disruption won't come from Seattle or Toulouse. It will come from Shanghai. Will it be perfect on day one? Probably not. The C919 and ARJ21 face delays, technical setbacks, and certification hurdles. But China plays the long game. And unlike Boeing, which is still recovering from its 737 MAX crisis, or Airbus, facing production bottlenecks, China has an entire state-driven machine behind this project, with money, patience, and global ambition. The world has seen Chinese smartphones replace iPhones in Asia, Chinese EVs overtake Tesla in Europe, and Chinese 5G dominate Africa. So why should airplanes be any different? Whether you're ready or not, the C-939 isn't just coming, it's already shaping the future. And when it finally rolls out in 2035, the skies will no longer be Boeing versus Airbus, it'll be Boeing versus Airbus versus China. Ready for takeoff? Then hit subscribe, leave a like, and let me know in the comments what you think. Is the West prepared for the C-939 superjet revolution?